good morning students today we are going to start a new chapter nuclei so let us first see what is the composition of nucleus every atomic nucleus except hydrogen has two types of particles protons and neutrons hydrogen has only one particle that is protons there is no neutrons in hydrogen so nucleus consist of positively charged matter called protons and there are also neutrons inside it which are uncharged now what about electrons are electrons included in the nucleus no electrons are revolving around the nucleus in or different orbits proton is the fundamental particle with a positive charge of 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and the mass of proton is 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 27 kilogram those values you have to learn by heart uh, its charge and mass charge is denoted by small letter e and uh, mass of proton i will be uh, writing like this m subscript p similarly mass of neutron when i take neutron neutron is also the fundamental particle it is having no charge and its mass is 1.675 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg so this is slightly greater than mass of the proton so mass of neutron i will write it like this m subscript n so this is mass of proton and this is mass of neutron so when you take the calculation we will say proton and neutron are having almost same mass but the mass of neutron is slightly greater than the mass of proton now the next thing is atomic number atomic number is represented by z and what is atomic number the number of protons in a nucleus so the number of proton in the nucleus is called atomic number what is mass number mass number is denoted by a it is the total sum of the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus so protons and neutrons are together called by one name nucleons it is a collective name of protons and neutrons together so when i say one nucleon it can be either one proton or one neutron so that is nucleon so the sum of protons and the neutrons in the number of nucleus is called mass number it is also called the number of nucleons and mass number is denoted by a that can be found by z plus n atomic number z is atomic number atomic number plus the number of neutrons will give you mass number what is atomic mass unit amu you have already studied in the pre, uh, lower classes amu it is 1 by 12th of the mass of carbon 12 atom 1 by 12th of the mass of carbon 12 atom is called amu and 1 amu is written as 1 by 12 into the mass of carbon 12 atom so 12 divided by the avogadro number 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 so after calculating this I will get the answer as 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kilogram. So 1 AMU equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kilogram. That is atomic mass unit. Now what are isotopes? You have already studied these uh, terms. I am just mentioning those terms. What are isotopes? Isotopes are atoms having same atomic number but different mass number atomic number is same mass number is different example hydrogen has three isotopes protium deuterium tritium those are the three isotopes of hydrogen similarly carbon has two isotopes c12 and c14 and uh, c14 is radioactive and c14 is used for radiocarbon dating now what are isobars isobars are atoms having same 
mass number but different atomic number atomic number is different mass number will be same so what is the difference between isotope and isobars isotopes are atoms of same element but isobars are atoms of different element and number 2 for the isotopes physical properties are different only physical properties are different chemical properties remain same because they are the atoms of same element whereas in isobars both the physical and chemical properties are different then the next term is isotons isotons means they are the nuclei having same number of neutrons number of neutrons is same then they are called isotons now let us see how will you convert one atomic mass unit into an equivalent energy so we already uh, know the equation mass energy relation einstein's mass energy relation is e is equal to mc square this is einstein's mass energy relation from here we can say mass can be converted into energy so here i am going to tell you how much is the energy produced if one amu is converted into energy okay so one amu is equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg c is the speed of light 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so i am finding the energy 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 into 3 into 10 raised to 8 whole square i will be getting some answer in joules i want to con i want to express the energy in mega electron volts for that i will divide this with 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 13 initially i'll get the answer in joules but i want the answer in mega electron volt so i will divide this with 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 13 so you will get it in mev mega electron volt so you will get the answer as 931.5 mega electron volt so 1 amu when you convert it into energy it will be 931.5 mega electron volt so please take this down so i am just going to give you some conversion 1 electron volt is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules 1 kilo electron volt is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 16 joules 1 mega electron volt 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 13 joules please remember these conversions so that is why i put here 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 13 to convert that to mega electron volt so please take down this also now let us see how to describe a nuclear size how to find the size of the nucleus a nuclei does not have a well defined boundary so you cannot say nucleus is exactly spherical in shape this is having a boundary like this and that okay there it does not have an exact boundary so nucleus we can consider nucleus as a spherical in shape because any object will try to obtain the minimum surface area and since sphere has minimum surface area we can consider nucleus as spherical in shape and by performing scattering using high energy electrons you have already studied rutherford alpha particle scattering experiment that is to obtain the size of the atom the structure of the atom here the scattering experiment is conducted using high energy electrons and based on that they got out the fact that the volume of the nucleus is directly proportional to mass number the volume of the nucleus is directly proportional to mass number so i will write the volume like this 
V directly proportional to mass number and volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, 4 by 3 pi r cube directly proportional to A or I will say 4 by 3 pi is constant therefore, I can say r cube proportional to A or r proportional to A raise to 1 by 3 r proportional to a raised to 1 by 3. Now, to remove the proportionality sign, I have to put a constant and that constant I put it as r 0. So, finally, r is equal to r 0 a raised to 1 by 3. This is the expression for the radius. Okay. So, r proportional to a raised to 1 by 3 and to remove the proportionality sign, I put r 0. So, r equal to r 0 a raised to 1 by 3 where r 0 is a constant value which is 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 5 meter. Sorry, it is not minus 5, it is 10 raised to minus 15 meter. r 0 is equal to 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 15 meter and it is a constant which is same for all nucleus and a will be the mass number. So, the radius and 10 raised to minus 15 is called Fermi meter. I will write R 0 as 1.2 Fermi meter because 10 raised to minus 15 is called Fermi. So, 1.2 Fermi meter. So, the radius of the nucleus ranges from 1 Fermi meter to around 10 Fermi meter. Okay. Now, let us move on to nuclear density. Density is equal to mass by volume. right? Okay nuclear density is given as mass by volume. So, just imagine the volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube because nuclear is considered as spherical in shape 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, 4 by 3 into pi into instead of r I can write r 0 cube a because we have already studied like this r is equal to r 0 a raise to 1 by 3. So, from here what is r cube r 0 cube into a. So, instead of r cube I wrote r 0 cube into a and we know the value for r 0 cube 1 0 1.2 into 10 raise to minus 15 whole cube into a. So, you got the answer as 7.24 into 10 raise to minus 45 a, a for the mass number. Okay. Now, density is equal to mass by volume. Let mass of one nucleon is m. Hmm? So, I will write here mass of one nucleon equal to small letter m. Therefore, what is the mass of nucleus? mass of nucleus is m into a, a for mass number. So, m is the mass of one nucleon that means one proton or one neutron that is called one nucleon that into a, a is the mass number. So, that is mass of the nucleus and what is density? Density is equal to mass by volume right. Therefore, I will write mass as m into a divided by volume I will write the equation for volume as 4 by 3 pi r 0 cube into a. Now, listen I can cancel this a and a, a and a is cancelled 3 will go top. Therefore, the final equation for density is d is equal to this 3 will go top 3 m by 4 pi r 0 cube d is equal to 3 m by 4 pi r 0 cube. Where is that mass number? It has got cancelled. That means, nuclear density is independent of the mass number. 
nuclear density is independent of mass number. So, when you calculate all the constant values, you will get the answer as 2.29 into 10 raise to minus 17 kilogram per meter cube. So, you can learn that as 2.3 into 10 raise to 17 kilogram per meter cube. So, that is all about nuclear density and think about this, think about the density, what is the density of water 10 raise to 3 kilogram per meter cube, what is the nuclear density 2.3 into 10 raise to 17. So, just imagine how much more is the density understood comparing to the density of water the nuclear density is very much greater. So, uh, nucleus is highly denser substance and the second thing. So, just please uh, note down those formulas and we are moving to the next page. When you think about the density of the nucleus, we can say that nuclear density does not depend on the mass number. That means, all nucleus possess same density that is the first point. Then, uh, that means, if I take hydrogen and if I take iron, hydrogen and iron both the nucleus are having same density. Now, number 2, nuclear density has extremely large value that we discussed comparing with water it is very very high. So, such high densities are found in white dwarf stars which contain mainly nuclear matter. White dwarf is actually the extinction stage, the death stage of a star a dead star we say there it only has nucleus. So, the density is this much high. So, if I take 1 teaspoon of that matter the mass of that will be in tons that much more will be the mass. Okay. Now, third point the nuclear density is not uniform throughout the nucleus it has a maximum value at the center and decreases gradually as we move away from the center of the nucleus. And the last point the nuclear radius is the distance from the center of the nucleus at which the density of nuclear matter decreases to one half of its maximum value at the center. Okay. Remember that point nuclear radius we will take the distance from the center of the nucleus to the point where the density reaches the half of the maximum value at the center. So, that is all about nuclear size and nuclear density. Thank you.